Hello, it is um, September 26th. It's Tuesday. You are here with the Chaos Community Weekly Hangout. I'm Elizabeth, even though it says I'm the whole community, I'm not. I am one person in the community, but I am the community manager. So I'm Elizabeth, for those who don't know me. Um, yeah, just a quick reminder that this meeting, as all chaos meetings, are under the chaos code of conduct. So keep that in mind. And if you need to read through that, if you're not sure what that says, um, you can find that on our website. So give it a look. Um, just basically, yeah, you know, you know how to act. Hopefully, I'm sharing. <laughs> I'm sharing. Uh, Yes, here we go. Awesome. So here are the minutes. If you need them dropped in chat, we are happy to do that. And of course, we um, welcome participation from everyone in this meeting. Um, I facilitate, but it is an open meeting. So if there's something you want to add to the agenda, you are absolutely welcome to do so. Uh, you can participate either on the chat if you don't want to turn your mic or camera on. Um, you know, we're really flexible here for those who don't know. So um, yeah, this is a community meeting. So everybody's welcome. Um, if you have not told us what language you would like to learn, we would be interested. I know, and we, we were talking earlier that the harder ones would be good for the instantly part. This is the key word right here <laughs> for me. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, yes, I mean, I think languages are very, very interesting. I don't have that natural. I think some people have a natural inclination for learning them. Maybe not. I don't know. I don't have that. So, you know. Um, okay, so let's start. For those who were at OSSEU last week, I um, just thought I would give some space on the agenda to tell the community how it went. I know we had some chaos related talks. We had a lot of chaotics there. So if somebody wants to jump in and let us know how it went, that'd be great. I, I thought it went great. Um, I have I actually have a blog post that uh, should should be able to go out, I guess, maybe maybe tomorrow or Thursday. And I'll do kind of a wrap up of some of the different different talks. Uh, but it was, yeah, it was really great. It was, you know, I got to meet Yahui for the very first time um, in person after working with him for many years in the Chaos Project. So that was that was really, really fantastic. It was kind of a, a highlight for me. But I feel like the Chaos Project was really well represented. We had a bunch of folks from the Chaos Project were giving talks, which was great. Um, the first thing I saw walking into the convention center and you go down an, uh, an escalator into the show floor, the very first thing I saw was the Paturgia booth. Nice. So they had Good placement. Prime, uh, prime placement. So that, that was great. Um, Daniel and um, Enrique gave us a little, little tour of uh, Bill Bao and, and helped us eat little, little food on sticks, the, the pinch does. Or pinched it. I, I can't say it. Um, something like that. Uh, and yeah, it was just it was just really really great. I don't know if I think Ildico was there too. I don't know Ildico if you have any any thoughts on the the conference. Um, I share everything that you said. Um, to me, just in general, the event felt more lively than the North America version of it in May, in Vancouver. Um, oh, that's good. I personally had a lot of meetings this time around, so I had a little bit less opportunity to check out the conference part of the conference. But in general, um, again, the sessions were, I think, uh, much better attended. Um, I saw that the uh, the OSPO track, for instance, was usually full when when I stumbled into the room. So I I think that it was a it was a great conference overall and everything else on top of it that Don said. <laughs> Was there a, like a hot topic this year? AI and um, the uh, mess around open source in Europe and probably everywhere, like the CRA and um, other government type mm -hmm. things that Pose some challenges. That was my main takeaway in terms of hot topics. Okay. Yeah, the Cyber Resiliency Act, the the CRA stuff was was a pretty hot topic. They had a a hashtag um, to try and encourage people to I don't know to make some noise about it because it really is kind of bad for open source projects and the policy people in the government don't really don't really understand 
that. And so there's there's been kind of a push from open source organizations around that. Um, in addition to, to AI, um, which uh, Ildiko mentioned, I think that there was also, there were also a lot of discussions around um, licensing and yeah. sort of this new wave of open yet not open source uh, license yeah. and the license changes and the impact on the communities. So I think that there was uh, a fair bit of talk around that as well. Um, what was the a AI talk? Like that's such a broad topic. I'm well, like, no, I felt like AI sort of cut across a whole bunch of talks. Like lots of people mentioned AI as a part of their their talks. I don't know, Ildiko, if you have a different perspective on that, but it felt like there was a lot of content okay. on AI. Is it like all large language models or AI more broadly construed? Also generative AI, I think. It's just, I think at this point, everybody's trying to figure it out whether it's the uh, the language models or or any other parts of AI, how to use it, how to rely on it, how to regulate it, how to anything about it. Mm -hmm. So uh, in that sense, it just it just popped up everywhere. I, I think people probably also felt that that you know they are not cool enough if they don't say AI in some context. Oh, absolutely. That is endemic. <laughs> And continue. even even a lot of the the OSPO track talks talked about um, AI from the standpoint of you know how do you create policies that talk about how people can or cannot use AI when it comes to their their companies or their open source projects. Yeah, I've heard several companies are not allowing the use of AI until they figure it out. Okay. Well, there, there are some real barriers, right? So the U.S. government has said that anything that is um, is written by an AI is not copyrightable. Um, probably and, violating a copyright. <laughs> and you don't know the provenance of it, right? So if I, I take you know something written by Copilot and put it in my product, um, <laughs> where did that come from? Yeah, no, tremendous, tremendous risk. So, yeah. Yeah. That's super interesting. Thanks. Thanks for that. And um, how was the the uh, two other things? The crowd, you said it was pretty good. I was just always kind of curious how that ebbs and flows from conference to conference. Yeah, I talked to Angela. She said, I think she said that it was like 12 or 1300 people. Oh, Don't quote okay. me on that because I could be I could sure. be wrong. But I think that's what she said. It sounds right. Okay. And then, uh, kind of duration. I mean, in my opinion, there was a good mixture of usual suspects as well as new people. Okay. And in my experience, the Europe events these days are better attended for whatever reason, both uh, both in terms of people from the region as well as just uh, people from elsewhere. Somehow, Europe events organized in Europe seem to be more accessible globally. At least that's that's the trend that I've been seeing. I don't know if John shares this observation or if, if it's just me. I find it hard to tell because the Vancouver conference was in that massive venue where everything was really spread out. And I'm not sure how much of it, it felt very lightly attended. And I'm not sure how much of that is my perception based on the massive venue and how much of that is is reality. But it it did the yeah, the Europe one felt a little livelier. Certainly I mean I... You know, for other events too, it just kind of feels like the events are buzzing more in Europe. And then maybe my last question was was um did you hear anything about insights at all? I'm always curious how <laughs> LFX insights is represented here, just as a part of our landscape, you know what I mean? So we have a bunch of things that I'm always kind of keeping an eye on. I don't remember anything about okay. insights. Me either. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah, they they were prominent in Austin and in Vancouver, so. That's why, yeah, I know yeah. it's been prominent in prior, and I was wondering what the what it was like here. Okay. Any final thoughts or questions? Okay, or except European architecture. 
is more community focused. That's efficiency this venue this venue was like like that mc escher painting or drawing with all the stairs that's what this venue was like i finally <laughs> had it figured out on the last afternoon of the last day wow i mean it was it was not conference friendly in my opinion <laughs> I mean, the, uh, they were like i don't know 50 elevators not every elevator going to every floor it's just stairs everywhere every direction it was like yeah dolly and other paintings it's just it was really hard to find your way around it and when you had to like rush from a session to a meeting or find a, a session in a talk the way corner through a cafeteria yeah it sometimes it felt like searching for a speakeasy when i was searching <laughs> what a great analogy i, mean, I love it <laughs> just my two cents that's funny speak easy yeah <laughs> maybe they had one i just didn't find it <laughs> yeah it was somewhere in there <laughs> all right well thanks thanks to don and ildico too for that wrap up that's awesome and don we look forward to reading your blog post um if i can help with that of course don't hesitate to let me know how I can help you get that out on the website, no worries. Okay, let's go on. So we are going to be at All Things Open in a couple of weeks. We are going to have a, I think it's a table, not a, like a booth uh, with like the curtains around, but I think it is a table. I'm actually not sure. We'll find out. Um, we So when we did FOSSI, we realized that we wanted to have some QR codes printed um, just on paper at the table so people could easily um, find website stuff um, or links to things on chaos because all we had really was the link to fill the format to get the Lego globe, which we are also doing again. Um, but then there was also we just had the website printed on our big sign so there wasn't really any easy way for people to um, to reach us, so I just want to throw this out to the Community to see what if we had any other ideas, um, definitely, we want to have a homepage. I was wondering if you think we should have a Slack link. I thought that might be helpful for people to join our Slack. Um, was there like, what else are we missing or what would be, do you think helpful for folks? I mean, certainly the Slack is where a lot of things take place. Like I wasn't sure if, you know, linking to the quick start for new contributors, like, is that too much? I don't know. I don't want to overwhelm people, but I mean, the quick start is another helpful place and not a lot of pro not every project has that. So I think it's something that's useful that we offer. I didn't that's, know. Oh, yeah, go ahead. That's my two cents. And do you think we need a link to just like our metrics page or anything like that? Is that covered? I I'm trying to remember what's in the quick start, but I think you get to navigate to those from the quick start. And I, my only reluctance about like if we offer too many things, then it's confusing, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, totally agree. Totally agree. OK, well, we'll try these three and we'll yeah. just have them listed on and then we'll see, you know, we can yeah. also. Yeah. OK, cool. Thanks, everybody. And I also wanted to just throw that out there. I see um, Matt is going, I'm going, I think Gary's going, Ildico is going. We do have a channel um, that I kind of repurposed from past conferences uh, in Slack. So I'll just make sure that you're all added to that in case we want to like grab a coffee or something as a chaos group. And we can organize it that way. Um, I also wanted to ask if there was any, um, we still do have tickets. <laughs> I'll just throw it out there one more time. If, if anybody um, does have free time in their schedule and they want to go, we do have some tickets available. You just have to get to, sh to not Charlotte, Raleigh. You have to get to Raleigh um, on your own but and pay for your own hotel and all that. But we do have tickets if you want. So I want to throw that out there too. And also ask if there was any other, any other thing that we need to talk about just so we're ready for all things open, I think. Things I are think pretty. we're good. Yeah. I have um, a tablecloth on order with the big chaos okay. logo on it. Since at Fosse, it seemed like that would have been really helpful just because there was a lot of space in between our table and 
just open area. So it mm -hmm. would have been helpful for people to see that. So yeah. And I do have those Lego globe here as well. So we're going to do that. Okay. Yeah. We need yeah. start. We need a Lego Star Wars ship, the thousand dollar ones. <laughs> yeah, you want to pay for that, Sean? <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. But I, I think Matt does. I think Matt was telling me the other day he wanted to buy. Yeah, it. I could. <laughs> yeah, I, I laughed on the uh, Open Collective because I submitted the, <laughs> the, the uh, request for the reimbursement. Yeah, and they were like, hmm. so they had to add an extra comment just to make sure in case anybody was like, <laughs> yeah. Really? I'm not enriching my Lego collection personally here is a, probably the question, right? Yeah, exactly. So uh, maybe like on the conference while we're on conferences here. So we had, we there has been a conversation a little bit about uh, FOSDEM. Yeah, that started last week, I think. We probably want to start surfacing that because it's already October. I think I think to Don, did you say that the deadline was in December, or am I remembering that wrong? The de the deadline for stands is in December. They have not yet announced the dev room um, deadlines. So um, those those will be due much much quicker actually than the stands. You would think just to yeah. get the schedule going. Yeah. Yeah. There was a usually dialogue. the usually the dev room proposals are due late October, early November, okay. because that gives people basically a month to open their, have their CFPs open for the dev rooms. There was a discussion that uh, Daniel started in Slack about how when Grimoire Lab did have a dev room, it was tied to university work. And I'm wondering if uh, perhaps we can frame our dev room that way to potentially increase the likelihood of it being accepted. Yeah, I, I like that idea. Um, one thing we'll have to be, I think I think part of the problem that we've had in the past is we we don't want it to be too project specific because it won't get accepted because chaos isn't isn't a big enough project. Like they can have one that's Python specific because that's a massive project. Python's um, big. It yeah. can't be it can't be chaos specific. Um, and we need to be careful to avoid overlap with some of the longstanding dev rooms. So I could see it being declined because um, if it looks too much like the community dev room, or if it looks too much like there's a there's another, there are I think are a couple of data dev rooms have been in the past. Like there's one that was like HPC big data or something. Um, and they might've had, I can't remember last year if they had anything around AI, um, but I think we just need to be careful to position it so that it looks different from the ones they typically have. So it's probably worth us going back and looking at the dev rooms for the last two, two to three years. Yeah. And the descriptions for any that might overlap with us and making sure that we write it in a way that it doesn't. But I think the easiest way to do that would be to focus it more on universities. And if, I don't know, Sean, if you and Matt wanted to kind of take the lead on that. Yeah, I mean, I can, I can frame a dev room that incorporates things that are chaos. Maybe Don, you and I can talk about that when yeah. We're together yeah, I'm happy to happy to help work on it. I think we can we can start working on it now. The proposal yeah. we know we know it'll be open shortly. Do we know? I mean, I've been proposed one before. Do we know what the format of the proposal is? I I don't remember. I okay. I used to run the config management dev room ages and ages ago. Um, it, it's not it's not onerous. It's it's I would look at the descriptions from mm -hmm. past dev the rooms, previous dev rooms. And, and do something about that length. There may okay. be a few other things that they want from us, but I think that'll be the the biggest bit that we have to write. Okay. So for those who aren't familiar with FOSTEM, it is a conference that happens in Brussels in February, early February every year. And we typically, if we can, do a chaos con attached to that. Um, but I don't, is that, would that be the same as the dev room or is that? No, something? that's a, okay. it's like that would, the, the dev room would be part of FOSDEM, gotcha. whereas chaos con is like an adjacent meeting. Yeah, yeah. and the chaos con is very chaos specific um, and the dev room can't be chaos specific. It'll have to be more general. And I think there was a discussion of it being on Thursday instead of Friday, so as not to conflict with, I forget what. <laughs> <clears throat> Uh, yes, to have chaos con on Thursday instead of Friday to avoid conflicting with the Open Forum Europe um, open source policy meeting. Mm -hmm. 
So is this, is it for sure that we want to do a chaos con? Like, is this something we need to start thinking about actually yeah. organizing? And yeah. yeah. And all that? is a great place to do a chaos con. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know, Garrick, do you have the bandwidth to look at venues again? Because I know you've, you've got some contacts. Uh, Is he on? Um, yeah. I can reach out to the same place we had last time. I don't have the bandwidth to go shopping around. I mean, I think now that we know how the place we had last time operates, we can provide clearer instructions on how to get to the different rooms. So, I mean, I, I, think, I liked the last place. It was big. I did too. But did it had too. nice windows and yeah. I thought it was pretty nice. Yeah. So, the only complaint I heard was people had a hard time finding it at first. And I think so we can fix if that. You could, if you wouldn't mind just reaching out and seeing if it's available on that Thursday. And if the answer is no, then you're done. And if yeah. The answer, yes, you're done. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah, one way, yeah, one way or another, you're yeah. done. A singular um, and we can always go back. There was there was a place we did it uh, a couple of years ago, which was so not the nice Ibis Hotel. Oh was yeah, away. Yeah. It was hot. Yes. Well, we filled the room was quite full. Yeah. But, yep. So Georg, yeah, if you could reach out to the the, I forget the name of the hotel, but yeah, maybe yeah. maybe copy copy a few of us, maybe. Yep. Sean, yeah, no. Matt, Elizabeth, and I, and that way. We, we can, can pick it up. Out. Yep. And then maybe Elizabeth, you and I could start working on Chaos Con. I put in the, there was a Chaos Con channel too, I think. that I, I think whoever is putting forward the dev room should not be the same people doing Chaos Con and vice versa. Like, yeah. Way too much to ask one person to be involved in both of those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that would pose some bandwidth challenges. I think you're right. <laughs> like if the dev room gets accepted, that's going to be a tremendous amount of work, I think. I don't know, actually. I don't know what it's like dealing with the fuzz. It's a, it's a ton of work. It's okay. a ton of work. Yeah, because okay. they have their own system for things, which is uh, not intuitive and not easy to manage. And you have to okay. run the whole CFP process. And there's a, a way of doing things. Um, yeah. So I'm I happy guess, to help out. I'm actually happy to help out on the dev room side because I, okay. I have done that before. Okay, yeah. so that was going to be my question. Like, a suit, like under the assumption that it would be accepted, you, you're okay with the next phase that would be all the work that goes into it. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay. Um, and I, I would be, I would love to participate in the next phase too. So, and I can help frame it so it's more likely to be accepted. Hopefully. Okay. Hopefully. So, um, so it sounds like Sean and Elizabeth, or Sean and I'm sorry, Sean Don. and Don on the dev room, and Elizabeth and myself on, and slash Georg, just for the hotel for ChaosCon. Mm -hmm. Elizabeth, you and I have done ChaosCon often enough that I think we should be okay. And if anybody would like to participate with either helping with ChaosCon, that'd be great or helping with dev room, that would be great as well. Yep, and for those who might be new to the community, once we kind of start rolling with a chaos con or as it gets closer, we'll chop this meeting off at half past, and then we'll take the rest of the meeting, the last 20 minutes and work on organizing that chaos con. Just that's usually kind of how, how it goes. So um, we can look forward to that. And if it, and like Matt said, if anybody does want to help, just let us know. We can add you. There's a um, we have two, two on chaos kind of already. Sophia and Anita. Awesome. Do you all want to just add your names here to the agenda? Is that okay? Yeah. Anybody that wants to help, I can add Sophia and Anita, and then whoever else. And I'll make sure you're all in the chaos con planning uh, channels channel. And then I had just one last thing. Um, Ruth, I don't know, you're on. Um, I, so for a, a lot of people can't attend all of these conferences. And I know, I think there's a Chaos Africa update later. I don't know if you're gonna talk about um, the, the conference that's gonna be in Angola. And I would, I really wanna work with you to send you like a, box of t-shirts or something or hoodies that you can distribute just to make sure everybody's getting all things that might want the things 
all things chaos swag. Yeah, just send a box. I think that's going to be the easiest way. Yeah, I think so too. That would be great. Maybe we can start, like if you're going to send the box, we can start the process already. Because like, so it gets here. Soon. I will. So I'll send you, so after this, I'll send you a link to the brand site that we use. You know what I mean? Like where you can like pick things to be branded. Chaos. Um, here I'll just send it here. It doesn't really matter. Do you have do you have the are the swaps already printed? No, I'll have to have it printed. I have some okay. of so maybe but... maybe just to cut cost on like the shipping or because like it costs quite a lot. If they're not already printed, I could print them here. Okay. You know, on my own and then we just get reimbursed for like the amount it was printed because like it will cost quite a lot if you're not using okay uh, when you're using that or the mailing okay let me um i'll talk to so yes let's do that um i just i need to talk to my people here on my end just in terms of how we would do that like logistically with money but you and i can sort that out Okay, got it. Yes, yeah, so, I mean the 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 best part would be is if the company that you work with could just send me an invoice, because then I can just pay that, and there's no like reimbursement necessary, you know. Yeah. So yeah. I'll, I'll find out about that. If you maybe if you could send me a few companies that you would work with, potentially, and mm -hmm. I can share. I can with, do that as well. Yep. Yeah. That would help be helpful. And then I'll just find out if it's if there's any issue with adding them as a vendor here. And then we can go from there. Okay. Cool. Thanks, Ruth. Matt, would there be any um way to just use Open Collective to just read? Uh, yeah, possibly. Yep. There like all the all the variety of different sources. Um I let me see if I can do it here first, okay. just money wise, because then we can Make keep the dollars here. in Open Collective. Okay. And LFX, like they're only reimbursements, so that's the problem with LFX. Yeah. The crowdfunding platform. Um, has anybody have you has anybody sent an invoice to Open Collective? Can you do that? I think Ruth has. Hey. I, that's how I get reimbursed. I don't send an invoice. I send a request for reimbursement. No, okay. yeah, I'd rather just send an invoice. Like, so the company would send an invoice to Open Collective. That way, nobody has to pay anything. Like, yeah. that's oh, what I prefer. Yeah, yeah. Got yeah. you. I got you. I think Sorry. actually, um, I wonder. So, Ruth, when we did, uh, I forget Google Season of Docs, was that? put through as an invoice to open collective do you remember yeah i put it as an invoice like for google season of docs yes okay so, yeah so maybe open collective maybe here one yeah. way or the other we can sort it out okay cool thanks um, the next one on the list, I just wanted to give everybody a quick update on our project manager team. We did switch meetings again, sorry, <laughs> to Mondays. So I know we try not to have meetings on Mondays at chaos, but, um, you know, that's what worked. Chaos zoom time is getting <laughs> a little tight. So, um, so yeah, we decided to just do it on Mondays, which is fine. And, um, we have a great fantastic, wonderful team of folks who are on on that. Um, Yiga is absolutely a superstar. Is she on this call? Yes, Yiga, you are a superstar because Yiga has put together a best practices doc for us. Um, for those who are interested in doing project management but don't have a lot of experience or um, don't have like a certification or anything like that. So we are gonna, um, Yes, Matt, no Friday meetings. Absolutely no. <laughs> Absolutely not. No, I will. I will die on that hill. Yes. Um, I was going to see if I could find I should have pulled this up. Uh, yeah, let's see if I can find this here, because this doc is amazing. And you can just put this together for us. So this is kind of going to be the process that we follow when we have a new project. 
Um, we're going to create a form that's going to ask the person who has the idea for a new project what these things are, and then we're going to take it from there. And each project is going to have two project managers um, and then a technical lead and or a knowledge lead. And we have a spreadsheet of what projects have been opened and things like that already. So um, yeah, so to give you an idea too of one of the projects, um, there, are, oh, I thought we linked to that. Ruth opened one, an issue in Grimoire Lab about cleaning up some of the docs and repos. So that's gonna be kind of one of our projects that we help out with. So Yiga and Busayo, they're gonna be the project managers. They're gonna work together with, the, with Ruth, who is the technical lead and knowledge lead on that to create the work plan, like what needs to be done, who's doing what, let's open some issues, let's let other people jump in, we'll label them property, properly. Um, yeah, make sure that we're kind of keeping everything on track. So I'm really excited about this part of chaos. It's gonna make things so much more organized and um, just together, everything's gonna be put in GitHub project board. So everybody's gonna be able to see what's going on with things. We're gonna be as transparent as we possibly can, because as we know, people come and go in chaos as any open source project. And that's a challenge I think for every open source project is to, yeah the handoff part and making sure that there's enough coverage for everything. So that's also another reason why we wanted to have two project managers on every project. Um, yeah, just to make sure that it's not all down to one person, it's a team effort. And then mm -hmm. the knowledge and technical leads also will be the ones to help sort out the actual tasks that need to happen. Um, so yes, yeah, so um, huge shout out to Yiga for putting that together um, and she just, made it happen in like a day not even a day it was the same day same day we had the meeting she was wow. like yeah i'll just put that together that's like, incredible okay <laughs> so we are gonna probably i would imagine we would want to add that to our knowledge base in some way um we've got to figure that out part that part out but yeah so great job. i have a question on this so the best practices doc i love it and it would be a form that a person would fill out in hopes of starting a new project is that correct yes yes so um the form we haven't it's up to me to create it which i haven't yet that's fine it's going to ask about these things yeah um, like who you are what's the project about what are we trying to do and who else has spoken up and said they want to be interested things like that so would um would this form be approved i i kind of like that i Idea, to be honest with you, as we get bigger, or there would be some, like maybe the project manager group reflects on it. Yeah, I think, yeah, go ahead. Says like, nah, I don't know about this project. <laughs> it seems a little not like a great idea or ill conceived uh, or whatever. Yeah. Um, Politely or stated. It might be. Yeah, that's a great point. We haven't discussed any criteria or anything like that um, as far as like approval to get a project started mm -hmm. um, i guess that's we should maybe add that to the agenda for next time of how that will go because we've always just kind of used like fuzzy consensus here in chaos just mm -hmm. uh, we bring it up at this meeting and we talk about it, it whatever it might be for a while and if it yeah. starts getting traction, it just kind of stays alive. And if it... Yeah, fuzzy consensus make it sound more sophisticated than I think it is. <laughs> you know what it is? <laughs> I would say that's that's valid. That's a... Yeah. <laughs> that's the phrase, isn't it? I thought that yeah. was... Yeah, oh, maybe it is. Maybe making it is, great. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so we'll talk about that. Maybe we do require some kind of conversation about something, about an idea before it gets to the form. Mm -hmm. state form is just like a logistical thing to get it going for sure mm -hmm. maybe we have um lazy consensus That's lazy the consensus yeah fuzzy that, whatever yeah fuzzy lazy <laughs> yeah lazy that that, that uh, sounds about right i was trying to talk <laughs> smart there for a while but whatever <laughs> That is what we use. Mm -hmm. And to be fair, loads of open source projects use lazy consensus uh -huh. yeah, it's... for things like this. Like if it's super important, maybe it goes to a vote, but I think it's it's kind of the the way we the way we do things. Yeah, things just kind of, they kind of start small and they just kind of if people are willing to pick them up and nobody has a 
big objection, right? Yeah. Yeah, and maybe um, you're right though, Matt, as we do grow, like we only have a limited number of project managers too. So we don't wanna overload that team either. So um, yeah, maybe maybe that is something that, lazy consensus is fine, but maybe like a overall bigger criteria. I don't know. Yeah, we can talk about that on Monday. Uh, okay, awesome. Thanks everybody. Uh, the next thing on here is also Yiga, who is, <laughs> again, freaking amazing. Um, so she and Victoria are doing the accessibility audit, and it is also listed on our list of projects. So they also do have two project managers that are not them that are helping sort it all out. Uh, there is an issue here that I opened in the website um, uh, repo just to kind of bring it up and make sure that it's like documented somewhere. Um, you get, I don't have a link to that awesome spreadsheet that you have. I don't think it's here either. Do you want to um, link that here? We would. I would love to show everybody. I think it's just stunning. Okay. okay. Thank you, Elizabeth. Um, I'll link it real quick. Or I'll drop it in the chat. Oh, thank you. Would you rather share your screen so you can talk about it? I'm happy to share, but if you want to. Um. <laughs> So I'm, not, I'm currently outside and I'm not with my um, laptop or my iPad, so I can't share my screen right now. Okay, no worries, no so worries. Let me just drop the link in the chat. Yeah, I thought we had it here in the thing, but we did not, so. Yeah, so Yiga's already had put a ton of thought into how we can go about this accessibility audit, and there's a very beautiful spreadsheet that has everything organized and listed and how we will move forward with that based on the level of audit that we want to do and the level of accessibility that we want to try to reach. So yeah, you get a superstar. And I love her. She is awesome. So we'll go ahead and move on. You get whenever you get that spreadsheet or that link, we'll just hop back. So can good. I make one comment? And I don't know how this is going. It's just a, it's more of an observation that um, there, there have been times when we've I think um, done things at the scale of say the website, whatever it might be. And like we do an audit for something and it it comes back with a lot. <laughs> and we're kind of, we find ourselves overwhelmed with the results sometimes. And then like, it's hard to proceed because we're not sure how to proceed. And so I don't know if this would be similar to that you know, that we would see I mean, a lot of things that we need to address, which is great, but like how we can thoughtfully move forward on them in a meaningful way, that's all. Yeah, and I think that that's where the project managers can really help out because they're okay. gonna be going through this process and really okay. help prioritize opening issues for things that are low hanging fruit so that other people who really want to participate and we have, quite a few folks that do want to participate and help with this. So um, I think having those project managers in place to just help coordinate and facilitate and make sure that people know what to do and where to go and have access to what they need um, can really help Yiga and Victoria go through it. So I think that might be the key that's gonna help us um, get through that barrier. Cause you're totally right, Matt. Like, I mean, we're, this is we have stuff to do like we have other things that we have to worry about and so um yeah i totally agree with you so this is the um the spreadsheet <laughs> that he has so we can she she and victoria can go through and say um do each one of these things and then if there is a change that needs to be made they can easily say oh this is going to be something for a content creator a designer developer or qa person and then they can open those issues either in the, I guess in the website repo is where it would happen, um, tag people, label things. And you know what, if, if, I think if everything, if things go on um, unassigned or um, nobody has an interest in something, I think that's okay too. Just the fact that we've documented that that needs to happen, um, yeah. we'll get to it. You know, we'll get to it eventually. I don't think this has to be done immediately 
Um, but yeah, this is like, and then we also are doing it for the badging website too, the new badging website. So yeah. So the idea is to make things um, easy for people who want to contribute and want to have something to do here um, to give them, put, point them in this direction if this is something that they're passionate about and want to help out with. I love this web. I'm so excited about this. Like, this is so organized and it's so clear to me. Like, okay, yeah. So if we want to just do, I think this is the low hanging fruit is just the level A. Is that right, Higa? Um, yes, yes. So level A is for, hi everyone. So level A is for things that we can really, um, changes that we can make almost immediately on the website. Um, so um, if there are essential stuff that we, we would need to do if we're going to, you know, have the chaos website or the DEI badging website very accessible and they are very simple to do more than half of the time. Um, so level AA is stuff that is for, you know, if we're trying to be ideal supporters to say, oh, we're, we're for accessibility, you know, we do this at chaos. Um, so we're supposed to achieve a level AA. So basically that's like the standard, you know, and then for level AAA is stuff that is saying, oh, um, so for example, if Chaos was an open source that specializes in, you know, stuff for accessibility, then it means that we're a specialized organization and we're doing everything possible to make sure that, you know, people that um, need accessibility or need accessible webs need to access the websites regardless of you know what they are going through are able to access it so that's like level a, a, a. but yes we can start from really simple stuff um, on level a and yes that's like what it is about for now thank you thanks Iga. and yeah so some of this might not thank even... you everyone yeah you this is amazing you are absolutely superstar um, like, so when they go through the check, like there, this may be fine. So there may not be anything that we need to do for that, you know, so it's not like we have definitely something to do on every single line line here. Um, we'll just have to see kind of how we, how we fare. Okay. And I think if somebody does want to help, I would say go to this issue and maybe just express interest so that we can keep track of that and include you in that project. Um, we have three minutes left. Um, Ruth, I'm so sorry. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. We have three minutes left for a Chaos Africa update. We got chatty today. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so really quick um, for Hacktoberfest, we're planning to participate in Hacktoberfest. There are some projects in Chaos Africa that we, that for example, the bots, we might want to use the Slack bot to participate and improve that bot, but we haven't started planning yet. So there is like really short timeline, but um, there are plans to participate. I wanted to ask Sean if Olga is planning to participate in Hacktober Fest. No, I mean, <clears throat> we have we have not discussed participating in Hacktober Fest. Um, it's prob possibly not a bad idea, not a bad way to kickstart the API development work that we've discussed, especially since we'll probably meet uh, either Thursday this week or a different time next week, which is October. So let me let me think about that. How would you suggest we promote it? I guess in the past, it's just been the Hacktoberfest issue tagging that uh, we used on this on Chaos. Is yeah, that so, kind of what you're thinking? Yeah, so, yeah same thing. Um, but like within Chaos Africa, folks can also like pick up issues. Um, on we we can talk about them during like the Chaos Africa meetings that Ogo is also participating. You can check out the issues here for people that write Python. Um, so that's how it'll be. Um, but I I think I'll connect with you later on that. Yeah up too much time um yeah so we're still planning participation and then projects in chaos that will participate in october first and then um i just wanted to give a shout out to oluchi she has been handling the social media platform like arts the suites or 
the post on X. Um, so she has been handling that. So thank you, Oluchi. Um, and then we have a space this Friday. Um, so some community members from Chaos Africa will be doing an EME session just to um engage like our audience that wants to join Chaos Africa but do not do not know what we do. So um we are having this space on the 29th of September and Mary Blessing, Giga and Precious will be speaking on the space and talking about all the things, how they contribute to the chaos project. So yeah, so those are all the updates that we have on Chaos Africa. I was pretty fast. Sorry. Well done. That was perfect. <laughs> Um, I see a couple comments here. We'll just address really quick before we head out. Um, yeah, Don is just expressing a little concern about Hacktoberfest and um, like the quality of contributions sometimes um, because they, yeah, they that's one of the reasons we didn't participate last year. Sometimes they aren't as um, beneficial as they could be or meaningful. It's, it's not. It's not necessarily that. I mean, that's a piece of it but it's the high volume of them. Mm -hmm. And some projects have been just completely overwhelmed in October um, by Hectoberfest. Now it might not be a problem for us. Maybe we're smaller, small enough that we're not kind of on the radar that some something like a Kubernetes is. So it might be, it might be totally fine, but I think we just need to be prepared that it might be a lot of work for people in the community. Are they still giving out prizes the same way they do? So they cut off their t-shirts this year, so they're not giving out t-shirts anymore. That might help if they're not giving away prizes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there'll be less sucks, people gunning for prizes, though. People will do anything for a t-shirt, as sad as that might be. It, uh, it's not sad. T-shirts are awesome. <laughs> <laughs> they are awesome. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. It was really great to see everyone. Um, hope you have a great rest of your day. And we'll see you here next week. Thanks, everybody. Nice to meet. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.